Today, I'd like to talk about the obvious reunification discourse, especially from a theological perspective. You see that my name down there, initial JFK Shin. <laughs> Do anybody have any idea what JFK stands for? Please put your hands up. Uh, not you. Maybe not. Yes, yep. Anyone? All right. JFK stands for Joseph from Korea. <laughs> That's me. I usually go by JFK. So next time after the presentation, please do call me JFK. Okay? <laughs> I also would like to assure you to keep you awake. What do you mean by this? We had a nice lunch, and I know that it's a human nature that we can't really resist our good sleep after the big meal. So I assure you to keep awake while I'm doing presentation. Well, <clears throat> why I put this photo in this my presentation? Uh, the first, my first uh, cross-cultural experience in New Zealand. By the way, I came to New Zealand 2001, been here already 17 years, pretty much Auckland-based. And uh, my first dinner invitation by local family was that they asked me to bring your own plate. Uh. <laughs> so I thought, just took it literally, all right, I need to bring my own lunch. Does that mean I bring my own plate? What does that mean? I was very naive, first generation migration, so I didn't have any key experience on that. So I took simply my plate with me. You see, guess, imagine how this local family reacts. I can see the face like, oh my gosh. For those who are new to New Zealand, by the way, bring your own plate means bring your own meals. Okay? <laughs> Especially today, I'd like to acknowledge the um, sacrifice and commitment for uh, Mr. Tony, uh, sorry, I forgot your surname, Not that you. family for their sacrifice during the Korean War in Korean way. As I myself served two and a half years uh, in, in Korea, and that's where well, my military duty, that's I honor discharge from the two and a half years military service. 20 years ago. So I'd like to acknowledge sacrifice and commitment for your family on behalf of yourself and also on behalf of my Korean people in Korean way. Would you please stand up? What's up? Thank you. So before we go over, I'd like to cover this following um, the section that uh, I'm looking at the purpose of the presentation and the scope of presentation as well. So looking at the controversy of the reunification Korea, we have a lot of uh, talk and there are controversial issues going around this reunification uh, discourse. And I'd like to look at the theological grounding of the necessity of reunification. The question for us is that, is reunification necessary? Challenge to the church and understanding the church within fall, uh, sorry, fence or world paradigm. I'm going to explain the later on and the implication that I draw. So the purpose of presentation is to discuss and justify the necessity of reunification of Korea from a theological point. And secondly, it is to consider any practical area where the church might contribute to adding fresh insight into the reunification discourse. So the scope of presentation is that uh, I try to attempt to view reunification from one branch of theological frame, namely the doctrine of the church in Korean, Kyuheron. So there are many branches of the theology, but I'm specifically looking at within the frame of so-called the doctrine of the church. The presentation does not go beyond the external factors, such as like a geopolitical consideration or interrelation consideration at all, as this is not part of my presentation. There are a couple of surveys that I'd like to show you on the democratic factor. All right. Here's the survey that done and uh, conducted by the one of the well-known um, the, the government institute regarding question of possibility of reunification. By the way, I'm saying that this 
survey is done to the people of South Korea only. Does not include the voice from the people of North Korea. Okay? So the possibility of reunification. 65% roughly said yes. The rest, doubtful. You see the, the generational, you know, um, the, the difference in 20s and 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. And uh, this generational view on the reunification are very much in a different. Of course, in the 2010, 2014, 15, it's changeable. In a recent survey, which is done by Institute for Peace and Unification studied at the Seoul National University 2015. This is another survey that's questioning about, is reunification necessary? You see that 51% uh, roughly say yes, but surprisingly, roughly 49% of the people uh, of South Korea says no, or maybe I don't know for sure. So it's not natural that you assume that people of Korea, and specifically people of South Korea may agree that, yes, reunification of Korea is necessary, but it's not. What about Christians? Well, there's not much different. The, uh, the sources from inst um, the Institute from the for Peace and Unification Study at Seoul National Institute, we've, we've seen that. Um, According to the survey conducted by uh, the Korean Society of Christian Religious Education in 2017, the majority of South Korean Christians see that reunification is necessary, but still there are approximately over 20% South Korean Christians opposed to the necessity of reunification of Korea. Well, as you can see, there are clearly different uh, views on reunification across generation, and even within the church. There is no unified voice on reunification of Korea. There are issues with regard to the principles and methods for reunification as well. And should the reunification of Korea be achieved without reliance on or intervention by foreign nations? Should the reunification be achieved by a peaceful means or by force? Should the reunification be achieved progressively or radically? And so forth. So the critical question, the critical question is this. Is reunification necessary? If so, what is the theological ground to justify the necessity of reunification of Korea. So this is the area I'm going to explore. The firstly, unification is necessary. Justice and reconciliation are central to the gospel. The scriptures clearly testify about justice and reconciliation. One of the scriptures that I'm um, the quoting here, let justice Roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing streams. It is written in the book called Amos. The other book of the scripture testify like this. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the right of all who are destitute. Justice, according to the Bible dictionary, is defined as God's divine righteous action that promote equality among humanity. It is used in relation to uplifting the righteous and oppressed and debashing the righteous and oppressor. So pretty much is focusing on the oppressed as a people based. Secondly, reunification as a doorstep toward national reconciliation of Korea 
as the mission of the church. I just want to restate the, this sentence. Reunification as a doorstep toward national reconciliation of Korea. I've seen that a lot of people see that reconciliation comes first, and then reunification as a final goal. But I see the other way around. Reunification for us as Korea is not the ultimate goal. It's not the end goal. Reconciliation, reunification is the beginning of the reconciliation. That was what I'm discovering. I'm going to explore extend it later on as well. Church here means communities and in a universal sense for all believers. I'm not talking about the local church. In a universal sense, all believers. So the mission of the church is that the Christian church's perception of its essential task in the world, not within the church, but in the world. Leslie New Begin, a the theologian says this, the church is a sign for taste and an instrument of the reign of God. The church should become a sign for taste and an instrument of National Reconciliation of Korea. Thirdly, well, um, throughout the history that the church becomes an instrument to bring social transformation. Let's look at the history of Christianity in Korea. In the history of Korea, the church became an instrument to bring social transformation. In 19th century, the church was self-evangelized and remained independent and self-supporting. Well, we think that the church in Korea maybe was influenced and the Christianity was introduced by the foreign missionary. No. A church in Korea has self-evangelized by a handful of the believers who had a contact with the foreign missionary in China. So this is a self-evangelizing church. When Korea was forcefully annexed by Imperial Japan in 1910, this shaped both the nature of Korea, nationalism, and the life of the church, Christian, Korean church. The church since then became a viable channel for expressing its nationalistic sentiment against the Japanese. And the nurturing ground of nationalism, political resistance, and democracy. Over the last 70 years, when you look at the history of Christianity in Korea, that you know, the life of church always go with the, this, um, the resistance against this force and powers. And you know, during the Japanese colonization, churches stood up against the um, emperor worship during the Korean War, and then the dictatorship in the 60s and 70s and so forth. Well, there are, of course, the challenges to the church that we can see that firstly, the, the general sentiment among Korean Christians is settled for a strong anti-communism, which has kept them from engaging reunification issues from a biblically informed perspective of reconciliation. Well, you see that amongst the Korean, I'm talking about South Korean only, that uh, there obviously that is this strong anti-Japanese you know, um, the feeling, and also anti-communism, anti you know, is there because of the historical background. And the secondly, there is a call for reconstructing a unified voice over reunification issue among the South Korean churches. Well, for example, there is an ongoing conflict among Christians over the issue of the means of reunification. While NCCK, NCCK stands for the National Council of Churches in Korea, in Korean, Hanguk Gidokyo Kyoe Hyobye, supports the view that uh, the currency's fire, perhaps you see the armistice, should be replaced by the peace agreement, including withdrawal of any foreign military forces from Korean Peninsula. This is their view. However, Hanguk Kidokyo Chong Yonape, the initial CCK, 
stand for the Christian Council of Korea strongly opposed this view and criticized NCCK. Even we see that there's no unified voice among the Christian community over unification discourse. Thirdly, there is a dichotomized view between religion and politics among the church. The Christians tend to view in the church that politics should be separate from their religion. Well, this kind of attitude is deeply rooted in the missionary activity in the 19th century that, um, that is clung to their, um, the rest of missionary. They cling to their traditional political neutrality. But like I said earlier, the beginning of the, uh, the, the formation of the church in Korea, church, the life of church always engaged in the political realm. I'm going to show you two um, diagrams, perhaps some illustration of the, the paradigm which I call fence or well. The word set refers to a group of objects that have some defined similarity which marks them out. It determines who or what is included and excluded and in and out. It focuses on the boundary. This is called the bounded set. We have sort of like a mindset, you know, when we see things, we tend to draw the line. So whether the object is in and out, this is our kind of understanding of that. But the crucial features of the set is not a boundary, but the direction of movement toward the relational goal. This is called the central set. Uh, let me bring just another illustration. Well, um, when you go to bush walk, all right, we just try to follow the path that we already have, you know? Somebody already um, and have the way to go to the bush walk. But imagine that maybe years, years back, they wouldn't have any the path, nobody gone through. But when people start go, go, path walk, it became more like a routine in a way and the pathway for us. Everyone can enjoy the bush walk. My understanding of the reunification course within the church is like that, this view, you know? No matter whether the external factor and this political discussion that churches strive to continue the open dialogue, that the church make the way to get into the deeper understanding, engaging in this, the goal, relational goal, the reunification. Well, like I said, I served two and a half years uh, my military duty on the border between uh, North and South, which now called DMZ, demilitarized zone. Um, Military service is compulsory in South Korea. So every young man should join the military service. Young, healthy, good looking, like me. <laughs> it's interesting when I see that fence is from south to the across the north. Gives a lot of a sentiment of feeling to me that you know, why the nation has been separate that I, as a South Korean, can't go across the north. There's only four kilometers away. Why is that? Gives a lot of a sentiment as well. Fences that demarcate the in from out. Fences are the boundary set by rule. It is a criteria of who is in or out, or what should be embraced or excluded. In every human life, there exist divisions and barriers that seems impossible to overcome. This often created conflict and misunderstanding. In June 1998, the founder of Hyundai Corporation, Jong Ju Young, from South Korea, he brought 500 herd of cows across the DMZ into North Korea. He was the first civilian to traverse the DMZ. Interesting, because uh, he was born in uh, North Korea, now he's considered as North Korea, and uh, he stole the money from his fathers because by selling uh, the one uh, cow, he came to Seoul, in the capital city of Seoul, uh, Korea, because he wanted to start a new life in Seoul, 
And soon after his uh, resettle in Seoul, that the Korean Peninsula is split up. So he was unable to go back to his home country. It took him roughly 50 years until he crossed the border with these 500 cattle. So the question for you and I is that who is going to bring cows? Could it be church? The mission of the church is to bring reconciliation where race disconnected us, religion separated us, politics divided us, wealth classified us. Reunification is not the goal of reconciliation. Rather, reunification is the beginning of Reconciliation. So here are some implications that I just throw. Well, history proved that uh, transformation and genuine reconciliation have been brought by nonviolent action. Secondly, the church as vehicle to provide an expression of hope for meaningful dialogue between both sides. Remember this. Um, fence and well paradigm, if you block, sorry, divide, no one just can cross. But if we have this well paradigm, which we can continue to construct a way to have a continued dialogue, well, that's possible. As a historical example that we can have a look at the, um, um, the German church and how the German church you know, contribute to the reunification of the German. This is extensive and the research and study on there. I'm not gonna go on that over, but there's obviously um, the, the, uh, the, the historical case as well. The thirdly, the church should show the direction of the dynamic movement toward the national goal of reunification. Our understanding of reunification should not be constrained and confined within the set and the boundary that we created. It should be open. Is the church bringing cows? Let me um, finish by um, introducing the two um, the stories for you. The story of a little North Korean girl. And there's a story of a little 11-year-old North Korean girl who made a journey from North Korea to China. After hours of hiking through mountains and crossing the river, she showed up at the steps of Chinese church, where she explained her situation and asked for help. The church deacons were amazed that she made a journey alone and asked, little girl, how did you know to come here for help? She replied, my grandfather told me, look for the cross and go there. Those people will help you. Well. Even in a close country like North Korea, the information about the church spread in the North Korea. And also the other case is that um, I, I'm leading currently just a small uh, group of Christian community. One of the members of just my uh, the community is a, as a Chinese that uh, her mother actually shared the, uh, her vision, whether you believe it or not, that, you know, saying that uh, while she was praying that um, God showed uh, the vision that, because uh, her father was served during the Korean War as like a Chinese, um, in the People's Chinese Army. And on the picture, what she's seeing is that, uh, and then there appear, the, the person who, he, her father is wearing the, this Chinese uniform and going back to North Korea. But God told her that this time is not to fight, but to evangelized and to preach the gospel. That was the kind of dream that she had and that she shared to me. And um, thank you for um, the, the listening to just my presentation. And I thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. <clears throat>